What the heck is going on with the Delaware real estate market? It seems as though if you watch any of the nightly news outlets or read any of the newspapers that it's a different story every day. You know, it seems like one day mortgage rates are up and the next day they're down. And then, you know, one day inventory's up and the next day it's down. So I want to just bring you guys some facts as to what we look at here in the market and how that may pertain to you and you know its relevancy again today is february 8th of 2023 so if you're not looking at this video in the first week or so some of these facts and figures may not be relevant anymore uh, but they just give you a good idea of what we look at and how we determine where the market actually is for those of you that are just tuning into my content for the first time my name is matt london and i'm a real estate agent here in coastal delaware and I put out content each and every week discussing Coastal Delaware, Coastal Delaware real estate, what it's like to live, eat, breathe, sleep, play here in Coastal Delaware. So if that's something that you would like to see some more of, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button down below. And then if you or someone you know is looking to buy or sell real estate here in Coastal Delaware, that's what we help people with every single day and we would love to work with you. So all my information is down below in the description and here on the screen. So please do not hesitate to reach out. I love hearing from you guys here on the channel. And if you want to join our private Facebook group, there's a link to that down in the description as well, where we just you know provide some more information about the area and what it's like living here. So a few key stats that I look at uh, pretty much every day, but I, I post them on social media and stuff once a week. Uh, there's really five main stats there. That's gonna be the new listings that came on the market, how many homes went under contract the previous week, how many homes closed in the previous week, how many days on market they spent or how long those homes sat on the market. And then a statistic called the sold price versus listed price ratio. And what that does is it tells us, you know, homes were listed for this much and they ended up selling for this much. So it gives you an indicator as to how healthy the market is because if people are getting a larger percentage of their list price, likely it's a more competitive buyer's market uh, and you've got less inventory and less uh, you know, homes available on the seller side. So as we look at a few of these stats, I've got all the numbers right here in front of me, so forgive me if I look down, um, but I just wanna make sure that you guys have the correct information. So as we look at it, you know, across coastal Delaware, we saw 83 homes come on the market last week, which that number's pretty low. Uh, the week prior, we saw 104 homes come on the market. So, you know, we're starting to see a downward trend again. I think a little bit of that is just the timing of the year but we are seeing buyers act as if we're in the spring market. Sellers are still in that winter mindset, but a lot of buyers are in that spring mindset. So we're starting to see a lot more multiple offers on homes. Uh, you know, we're not seeing people offering $100,000 over list price like we saw, you know, last year, but we are starting to see more offers on homes. I've got a home that I showed that ended up with six total offers on it. Um, and it went under contract. So there's definitely a lot of buyer competition out there. As we turned into the new year, a lot of buyers are making peace with where the interest rates are, or maybe they figured that they can refinance down the road. Um, but we are starting to see a lot of buyers come out and a lot of multiple offer situations are returning. So if you are thinking of buying, just know that you may not be the only offer that seller has in hand. So make sure your agent is asking the right questions. Obviously, if you are looking for an agent, we prefer that you use us, but understand that everybody is gonna, you know, maybe have somebody that they already know, like, and trust. Uh, but just make sure that your agent is asking the right questions and know if you are the only offer at hand or not, because that can make a huge difference in structuring your offer. The second stat that we look at is the number of homes that went under contract in the previous uh, week. So last week we saw 77 homes go under contract. You can see by the graph that I've got here on the screen that the under contract graph and the new listings graph kind of match each other. And there's a good reason for that. Obviously homes can't go under contract if they're not listed for people to buy. Um, so they, those two typically mimic each other pretty closely. And you'll see that every time we've seen a spike in new listings, we've also seen a spike in homes going under contract. And what that tells you is there's still plenty of buyers in the market and they're just looking for the right home. So there's not enough homes on the market when those homes do come on the market that are priced right and in good shape and fit what buyers are looking for, then those homes pretty much almost immediately go under contract. Uh, we're starting to see, again, more speed there as well. I know we mentioned multiple offers, but we're starting to see a little bit more speed as to how fast these homes are going under contract. 
just based on, again, not a lot of inventory right now. So when things do come on the market, they get gobbled up quick and more than likely in multiple offers. The third stat that we like to take a look at is the number of closings that we took in the prior week. And last week we had 55 total closings. You'll see that the closing graph does not nearly fit where the listings and under contract graphs line up. And a lot of that is because the closings are obviously a lag part of the business. So if you write a contract on a home, you're not gonna close on that home for 30, 60, or 90 days. So a lot of what we're seeing as closings now are contracts that were actually written in December. So a lot of these haven't, the new listings haven't caught up to where the closings are yet. We'll see the results of the currently listed and under contracts here in another few weeks. So you will expect this chart to change a little bit as those homes that have gone under contract to then close. You'll see a little bit of an upward swing in the closings as we get down the road a little bit and continue to keep our eye on the market. The next that we look at, and this is a big one for me, but this is the days on market. And we look at the median number. There's gonna be some homes that sell that have been on the market for 500 days and there's gonna be some homes that sell for you know one day. So we look at the median number just to kind of get a, a good average number. Um, sometimes the average is largely skewed one way or the other. So we look at the middle number just to get an idea of where the health of the market is. And last week, the homes that closed, we saw them spend an average of 21 days on market. So what that means is for the homes that sold last week and, and actually went to closing, they spent a median of three weeks on the market, which in the grand scheme of things is still not very long. That means from the day they went live to the day they went under contract was roughly 21 days. Uh, again, there was quite a few that were less than that and there were quite a few that were longer than that, but 21 was the middle number. You can see that we've stayed right around that three week mark now uh, for quite some time. We have dipped below it and gone above it, but we're still, that trend line is still right through the three week mark. So if you're looking at listing a home, just know that more than likely what's gonna happen is you're probably gonna, if again, if you're priced right and in good condition, those are the two that, you know, two factors that are taken into account for every single listing everywhere. Um, but if you're listing your home, more than likely three weeks is gonna be your number. If you price it on the high side for your comps, you're gonna sit longer than that. And if you price it on the low side of your comps, you're probably gonna get gobbled up quicker. Just a matter of what matters for your financial situation and your timeline. Obviously, you know, if you do list it high, you run the risk of getting stale on the market and then ultimately taking a lower price. Whereas if you list it on the lower side, you're more likely to get multiple offers and run it back up to the price you were thinking in your head anyway. The final stat that we look at is the sold price versus original price ratio. And what this does is it tells us how close to the original list price sellers are getting in the market for the previous week. So if we look at last week's, sellers of homes that closed, so actually went to settlement, those sellers got a median number of 101.46% of their original price. So what does that mean? It means they're getting over list price for their homes, not by a large margin. Again, last year we saw that number as high as, you know, 125, 150%, um, but 101.46% you know, that's telling us that there's a lot of buyers coming out into the market and writing multiple offers. Because more likely, if you don't have multiple offers, you don't get over list price. So what we're seeing there is a lot of offers being written for over list price. Um, they're coming back in the market. I know that there was some talk about, you know, the market taking a downturn and stuff, but we're just simply not seeing it currently. And this sold price versus original price ratio kind of paints that picture a little bit for us as well. You can see that we did take a dip in the last few weeks where we got down to about 93%. But for the most part, this number has stayed pretty close to the high 90s and low 100s. So there hasn't been a big fall off in pricing. Any of the price reductions that we have seen are on homes that were likely overpriced to begin with. So if you see a, a home that has slashed the price, it likely means they either haven't gotten any showings or the feedback has been that their price is too high and that you know they need to bring the price down in order to find a buyer and meet the market because ultimately the market's going to dictate what your home is worth i know you know sellers out there we all think that our home is worth more than uh, you know the market probably does because we've got some sentimental value there but if you just look at what the market is telling you it's pretty evident as to when it says that it's overpriced or not and that metric right now is about three weeks 
if you're not under contract within the first three weeks, then you are definitely overpriced uh, just based on the statistics that we look at and what's going on currently here in the coastal Delaware market. Now I say all that, and you're probably trying to figure out, you know, where all these different bits and pieces link in with you. Um, and here's, you know, just my takeaways and my thoughts on it. So there's homes that are coming on the market, but they are quickly going under contract. Again, the spring market is here. We saw mortgage interest rates drop down below 6% for the first time last week. That has since changed with the jobs report, uh, and you may be wondering, you know, why the jobs report was positive but had a negative impact on mortgages. So it's it's funny. It's kind of backwards thinking that when the jobs report comes out stronger, mortgage rates actually increase. Uh, so it's like it's bad news that all these people are are employed in jobs. But the way the reason why that is is because when the Fed sees that and they're trying to curb inflation, obviously, you know, we've had pretty crazy inflation over the last year and a half or so. Uh, and as they try and curb that inflation, if they see all these people are employed and they've got jobs, that means that they're still out spending money and that inflation hasn't been controlled yet. So as all these people are employed, that just tells the Fed, hey, you can raise the base rate again and it's not going to have a terrible impact on these folks because they are all employed. Now, when people don't have jobs, that's when you see the mortgage rates start to come back down again, because inflation's under control and all the other metrics are in line to where they can take their foot off the gas a little bit and bring those rates back down again. I know it's kind of messed up, kind of kind of jacked up way of thinking that you want people unemployed, but in the mortgage rate world, uh, you know, the, the weaker the jobs report comes out, it's almost better for mortgage rates that way, which is kind of backwards. But uh, we do, uh, as we look forward and look down the road, we do think that rates will come down significantly between now and May. Um, again, I think we'll see somewhere in the high fives in that timeline. It really just depends on where the Fed ends up with their meetings and how they look at it going forward. But I do think between now and May, we will start to see some five rates again. After that, again, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell you too far in advance. I'm just speculating based on what we have seen historically and with the current trend on things, but it will be interesting to see as we go forward where that goes into Q3 and Q4 and the kind of unknown that we have there, especially with the current state of the economy and just what it does to the housing industry. I hope you guys have enjoyed this market update today. Uh, again, if you are looking to buy or sell here in Coastal Delaware, I would love to work with you and I love hearing from you guys here on the channel. So all my information is down below in the description and here on the screen. And then if you enjoyed the content today and you are thinking of moving to Delaware and you want some more information about it, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button right down below. That keeps you in the loop each week when we go live discussing all things Coastal Delaware. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Peace.